First up is Phil Fibaka31. So who the hell is Phil? <laughs> he is the guy that originally tagged me in a post about Board Ape Yacht Club if the stream that we have that is history is anything. It's an appreciation for capturing the moment, and that moment would not have happened without Fibaka. We'll hear about his journey and reminisce of the times that were. Dude, this is kind of surreal, to be honest with you. Um, I think back to early days, Top Shot, and it's all kind of a trip just because, man, uh, this watching you on Top Shot for so long and being like just a fan. And then becoming like a friend through DMs and conversations we had. And then, of course, minting apes. Like, it's all coming, kind of come full circle. Like, I was talking to my wife about this. I'm like, dude, Schiller has always been someone I've really respected just because, man, you were grinding it out. You were, uh, you were helping all of us that were deep in the streets of Top Shot. And so, like, for me, this is really cool just to kind of, like, reminisce and, and also just talk about, you know, what's in store and, and things that, you know, things that I'm cooking up and things I'm working on as well. But, but of course, I'll, always giving love to you because, again, you're one of the OGs. You're somebody that uh, I always looked at as like a, like a famous person because you were that to me. And even my boomer self, I just turned 36. And I remember mowing the lawn, listening to Top Shot. I remember doing dishes, listening to Top Shot streams, all from you. And obviously, Top Shot um, was such a surreal experience. And a lot of my memories are from your stream. So this is dope to just talk, man. Well, I appreciate that. And it's cool seeing that you're kind of jumping out there and being a uh, contributing member, I guess, to the content space, because that's something that everybody's kind of, I feel like getting more in tune with feeling more confident about a topic. And, you know, not everyone's able to go and teach a classroom per se, but everybody's able to give their experiences, stories and try to help everybody out that's coming out uh, to something that is exciting and new. So uh, I do have a couple things listed here regarding things that happened with apes, but let's go back and start things off here with the Board Ape Yacht Club Mint. So you tagged me in a post for free giveaways, and I, <laughs> it happened kind of often back then. So I was like, ah, okay, Phil's tagging me. And I looked at it, I was like, you know what? These kind of look all right. Like it's early days. There wasn't really a whole lot out there. We were, again, only in Top Shot. Zed Run was really the only other big collection at the time that I remember. So what do you remember back from those kind of like early days of that transition from Top Shot into Board Apes? Yeah, it was completely wild and weird because I was in the same boat where like you would see all these, you know, different collections. It wasn't like it it was in later 2021 where you had a million collections a day, but even still you would get tagged or people would share like a collection and and honestly most of the time I was just not interested. But this one specifically like Board Ape, and I'll be honest, I did not mint Board Ape right when I saw it. I think I saw it maybe 2 or 3 days prior to minting out the night that it actually all minted out. And so I wanted to just get like perspective kind of, to be honest, um, from people that I respected. So you were one of those, of course, and, and I had to tag you in it. And for me, um, what interested me, I liked the art right away. I thought it was cool. It was clean. Um, and then I know this sounds so hilarious now looking back, but like the roadmap, it was, this is like simple concept, but the idea of like, we're going to pay back our moms and we're going to do this merch and like merch back then, like, and I'm wearing, you know, one of the OG board ape hoodies today. Cause I just had to. And um, merch back then, like that was such a big deal. I know that sounds crazy because now we're like, well, please no more black <laughs> hoodies. But, you know, it's like back then, like that was one of those things that you were excited about. And so, you know, I remember tagging you and then you quickly flipped the script on. Then you're like, you know what? I'm, I minted these. And I actually think you minted before me because I was like, I was this is such noob talk here. But I was like, I could not figure out how to like transfer my ETH. And now I look back down. I'm like man, I've done so much more over the last three years with DeFi and changing, you know, tokens and staking and all these million things that it's kind of crazy to think about where, where I started, where I was, I was literally in the DMs with the Board Ape Yacht Club official Twitter handle asking for help on like, getting my ETH over there. So like, it's, it's just wild. And they were responding, you know, and it was like, surely it was one of the four founders because it wasn't like they had a team of 130 or whatever they do now. It was just the four of them. So it's just, it's completely crazy. The transition, to me, um, Top Shot always made sense because I've always been a collector of, of sports cards um, and memorabilia. I've loved autographs forever and massive sports fan here. And so that that clicked pretty quickly for me. And then NFTs besides you know Top Shot, I got into some smaller art collections and not shockingly, the two that I got into, and these were like 
I liked the art. Both of them ended up getting burnt out because it was just like this one man show of, of little art collections. This was prior to Board Ape Yacht Club. And then obviously minting, you know, my PFP, I've never listed it. And as soon as I got it, I mean, I, I was looking back at our DMs and it was just so cool and, and electric to like just share what we had, had you know, minted and, and revealed because that was the big thing. Again, we take it for granted now. It's like you mint things all the time or something. I don't anymore, but, you know, there for a while you're minting things daily. And it was like the reveal became less exciting, I guess. It was, it, I mean, reveals just ended up being, can I flip this for 10X right now because I got a top 100 rarity. <laughs> yeah. Back yeah. then, like we freaking revealed it and it was just like, let me dive into this. And I started looking at the traits and I saw I had a halo and, and then the rest is history. So it's like, it's wild to think less than almost three years ago, but less than three years ago. Um, we were minting these silly apes with no expectation of anything more than them paying back their moms, this mutant arcade and some merch. And now look at us. It's like, yeah, there's been bumps along the road, but like, to me, I'm still so bullish on board ape because honestly, like people like you in the community where, um, I've been, been able to like form these relationships and start creating content. But even before that, it was just like, I was having conversations with such amazing people and like really successful people in a wide field. And so to me, that's what the board API club was and still is. And I think, um, I think, you know, dips in the market is actually not necessarily a bad thing because I think it ends up allowing people that weren't here at the beginning that are awesome creatives and, and builders and community members that maybe want to dip their toe in now. Well, now it's a little bit more feasible there for a while. Like, like, am I really going to go to one of my friends, you know, my normies and be like, Hey dude, just go buy this mutant ape. It's only 150 K like only it look at me like I was insane. Right. And so it's still expensive. Like for someone like myself, I'm a teacher and coach, like it's still expensive, but at least now you have people that are starting to say, you know what, I'll, I'll roll some of these shitcoin profits or, or whatever. Maybe they, they sell a couple of NFTs. Maybe they sell a, a thousand top shot moments. Cause they're all like a dollar now and they end <laughs> up getting a, a mutant ape yacht club, but it's exciting for me. Like there's energy. Yeah, there's been, you know, maybe some stumbles along the way, but I, I don't think I could be more bullish, to be honest with you. So one of the things that I've come to realize is everybody's talking about, oh, what are we doing with our, you know, portfolio allocation, even though, you know, NFTs were supposed to be this collectible, but obviously it grew to a height where people kind of opened it up more. But my thoughts always been with it, like if I sell this, the likelihood of me being comfortable spending $60,000 on an asset I if I sell, I'm I'm probably just out, period. And, you know, yeah. it's also so nascent and early that we, you know, we talk about these things and everybody's got huge hyperbolic opinions regarding everything. But it is also like year kind of three. <laughs> and assuming yeah. that blockchain really takes over and becomes this another massive sector that the world really, really cares about. We have no idea where any of this goes. And so, yeah, I think. Yeah, go ahead, dude. I was just going to say that's, that's so early. It's like three years. Like people are acting like we've been here for 30. It's three years, not even. Well, so curious your thoughts then regarding like leverage and whatnot, because we had pudgies that were, oh my God, everything's mooning. They had the airdrop that was associated with it. And then we saw a massive NFT flush completely across the board. We saw Izuki before when they did the elementals drop and then they brought in, uh, well, they kind of crushed what Bean's value was supposed to be as it was the second collection. Um, but for some of these other things, it does feel like there's massive amounts of leverage or do you think that it's just everybody pivoting here to go into uh, crypto? as it's going up i think it's a little of both i mean um what i found and this is not a slam to anyone really but like where my value in nfts is has always been as a community member and more as a collector that doesn't mean i haven't sold like i've had some really like substantial wins that have like since like completely changed my family's life financially and that's been great but like for me it's always been really about if i like a collection if i really really love a collection or even the top shot moments like i, I got them because i really liked them um you know i'm going to be more of a hoarder if you will like i'll have boxes of nfts in my digital you know closet where most of the space is more of in the trading mindset which is not a bad thing and so like holding a board ape at whatever it is right now i, I literally don't know 60 fifty thousand sixty thousand dollars I mean, that's, that's a lot of like potential liquid that you could go, you know, put into a crypto, even if it was just Ethereum and you just want to buy Ethereum and hold it for a while. That's probably a good play. If you want to go play in the meme coin streets, like I don't, I kind of wish I was good at it because I see all these people just killing it. But there is definitely a, I don't want to say there's risk both ways, risk and holding the asset and just being a collector and a community member. And because like the reality is the true reality is 
Board Ape, um, yes, we've gotten a lot of airdrops, the Kennel Club, uh, the Mutant Serums, Ape Coin, Other Side. There's all these things that we've gotten, which has been great. Like, let's just keep it a buck, though. Like, there's not going to be a ton of, like, just straight airdrops for, like, new collections, I don't believe. Now, will there, there will be occasionally some assets that are valuable for sure. But I think long term, and I know, like, talking long term in NFTs is almost comical. Um, just because things move so fast. But when I try to think beyond six months, even beyond 12 months, I think to myself, you know, what's the true value of Board Ape? To me, it, it boils down to a few things. Number one, um, it will become uh, a historical NFT, not because it was first, but because it really was one of these NFTs that took things more mainstream. Like that's just, that's just the truth of the matter. No matter how it happened, and I know there's talk, you know, of course, MoonPay getting some, some athletes and, and music, musicians, et cetera, into the game, but there were others that just came in and bought too. And so it became this like popular NFT. So I think that historical, historical value, which I kind of laugh at, to be honest, will be part of it. But I think the bigger thing is this massive network effect where you can connect with people literally around the globe that have amazing uh, skills, businesses, um, connections. And, and I look at it, you know, it's a board ape yacht club. It's a club. It's a membership. And so like, again, I know it's cliche. I know sometimes looking at it now, it's kind of like almost laughable at times. But I truly believe those membership benefits will be because of this network of people that you can connect with, you can build things with, you can ask for, you know, help, et cetera. And you see businesses that are popping up, I mean, weekly, monthly, daily, um, based around, you know, a board ape or a mutant ape. And so to me, um, am I surprised that, you know, people are, are bouncing and, and NFTs are bleeding right now? Absolutely not, because the it's still risky as hell. The 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 better chance of an, uh, you know, a comeback or, a, or more value right now is playing in the crypto streets, whether that be meme coins, whether that be just buying soul ETH a Bitcoin, like that's the, that's the better play right now. So I'm not, I'm not shocked at all. Some of it's leveraging too. Um, we could get into that a little bit. I, I hope there's a day where the lending becomes more than just two or three people controlling that. Um, if we had an actual, you know, some businesses that were doing that more um, than individual players that are able to market manipulate, that would be better. Because I don't mind the lending. I don't mind being able to, you know, borrow some ETH off of a board ape and go do some other things with it. But the way that it's controlled by basically two to three wallets right now is not super healthy. So one day I think it will become something much bigger and more beneficial but for now yeah we're you know people are chasing meme coins and that's cool like i i want everybody that does that i hope all of them win the reality is not everyone will and for me i'm just i don't have the time or energy to do it for sure uh hoddle hill and tolly t doge jj hops yo guys what's up thanks for uh, tuning in if you guys are here feel free to let us know and if you got any questions here for phil uh, i can ask them barring that they are relevant so i want to you know for this entire session i'm bringing on a whole bunch of different guests and i called the chill the chiller and you were kind of my yuga representative for this and so i want to go in a little bit more of a deep conversation because i think a lot of people see what's going on with yuga and i would argue comparatively to the other collections here people are generally familiar so i don't want to go from you know just kind of square one but when we saw the Dookie Dash original game came out and we saw people going out to pay esports pros and people that were much better at them to get a uh, better whatever it was at the end. And then we saw that happen again when Heavy Metal came out and everybody was vying for these amps and obviously moved down a little bit far ahead. Obviously, crypto markets taken back. NFTs are down a little, but we saw a ton of people just throwing money on the chance to potentially get something that they think would have value. How did you yeah. create that? Mm. Yeah, the thing about NFTs in general, I think some of it is, um, I think it's a tough job if I'm being honest with you. And this goes for any NFT collection. I think the idea of giving information but not completely revealing your game plan is this like thin line. And I think if you, I don't, you know, I haven't had these like exact conversations with Yuga employees, but I'll be honest, like I have really good relationships with some of the people that work at Yuga. And, and lots of times I'm just passing on what I see. And some of that's feelings that I have, but also like I, I try to take a temperature check of just the space in general. And I think one of the biggest things is there was just, there wasn't a whole lot of clarity. And so what happens when there's not clarity is naturally there's going to be way more speculation. Now, speculation is definitely part of NFTs, 100%. It's definitely part of meme coins, crypto in general, speculation. But 
I think there's a fine line because you don't want people to get so far out in front of their skis that then they're, you know, again, selling their house, not really, hopefully selling their house for something that they're not even sure what's to come next. And I think also like on that note, I think, again, this is just, just Phil, the silly pink fur, uh, halo ape talking. I think that there was just so much going on with Yuga labs that they got out a little bit in front of their skis. And that's not a slam. I think that's just like, a lesson for them as they had all these things happening. You still had the club. You still had Ape Fest. You still had merch drops. You then had Dookie Dash. That was a massive success. By the way, side note, if you haven't signed up or if you haven't heard about Dookie Dash, you should try it when it comes out. It'll be free to play. And I was able to play it um, as a tester, if you will. And I'm not a, I'm not a gamer. I'm not great. But it's really it's fun. Like, it's definitely fun. It's addictive. It's one of those games that, you know, if, if you need to pass five minutes, 10 minutes of time, you can play and there's actually going to be substantial rewards along the way. But yeah, they had Dookie Dash. And then, they, you know, they transitioned into heavy metal and, and they would admit, they've said sort of as much without it being completely clear, is the heavy metal and Forge experience was not at all what they wanted it to be. It was a, it was a mistake. It was a misstep, if you will. And those things happen. Like, again, we just talked about it you know, a few moments ago, this is a, a company, a business that well, was valued at one point at $4 billion. That's less than three years old. So um, if you talk to, I mean, really anybody, you're going to have some mistakes or missteps. And so I think, you know, if they could redo that, would they? Sure. But at the end of the day, um, it's this fine line of they are definitely experimenting with what works and what fits. And that's not a negative, by the way. They said that as much, is that they wanted these short version, well, short, you know, a couple months maybe, versions of games, experiences, gamified mints, whatever it may be, to test out the waters. And then finding what works, and then doubling down on that. And so look at Dookie Dash. That freaking worked, right? It was viral. Like, people were playing. I remember streaming it, right? And I, again, I'm not a gamer, but was I spending ApeCoin just because it was, like, fun to play? Yeah, I was. Did I think I was going to win the key? No, I'm not a fool. Like I knew I had no shot and I wasn't going to pay anyone to do it. But like to me, it was a gamified mint. It was an experiment. And that's really what these things are. And I think as you know, now in 2024, you look at legends of the Mara season three is happening right now. If you don't know what that is about, basically you're using other deeds and you're using these creatures called Mara that you got one for free per deed. Um, and you're either farming sediment or you're fighting shattered. And when you fight shattered, you collect ship parts. Well, this like, pretty um static pretty slow moving game right now legends of the mar and it is season three after season three they're actually going to a completely different version which will be it looks like a little bit more gamified where you if you want to you can be a little bit more involved in the process and so and that's in collaboration with uh far away or far away however you say it i think i say it wrong every time um who did serum city um, they're working on, they did the rebrand of Dookie Dash. And now when Legends of the Mara season four comes out and right after season three, they're going to have some play test of what that will look like. I think this is Yuga learning. And I think this is them making deeper connections and partnerships with really quality people. I like what Faraway is doing. I think uh, the mechanics that they use are great. Again, Dookie Dash is way better than the original. Like it's so much cleaner. All of it is better. Um, I'm excited about that. And, and so long story short is they've, experimented they've had some bad experiments like that's literally what experimenting is for and they've had at least one good experience which was dookie dash now does that mean that all things they do from now and forever will be amazing and just you know blow our hair back no not necessarily but i truly believe that and they had a bunch of reorganization right they realized that some of the people some of the things were not fitting that's just the reality and that's tough too and daniel you know kind of drove them through this like rocky time where you had to make tough calls of who stays and who goes. And, and I think I truly believe in 2024, um, it doesn't mean that apes are going back to 150 tomorrow. That's not going to happen. But I think the experiments are going to continue to be better. And I think you'll see the bigger vision, which is much more than what you've experienced so far. It's interesting when we talk about experiments and the entirety of Web3 and seeing what works and doesn't work and also the people that get involved and end up getting a lot of flack if something doesn't go uh, well. And with that topic in mind, I wanted to kind of transition here to the recent Moonbirds acquisition, which caused a lot of stir. And then after that, I want to go into Aidfest and then uh, other side trip. But this Moonbirds thing took 
everyone by storm to the point where the team had to come out, do a uh, town hall address, I guess we call it, and they kind of just laid it out on the line. I was watching your guys stream for it. I was a little bit critical of some of the answers. I know that you were having some pushback saying, oh, no, like, OK, but here here's a different angle to look at it. And from what we know, it sounds like there was a huge treasury that came with acquiring proof and moonbirds. Uh, and then at, kind of at the same time, we started remembering that Kevin Rose had all these public uh, attacks almost towards Yuga Labs and it, it, it kind of felt odd and it, it turned a lot of the community off and I know there was a huge uh change up per se of people you know from their pfps to literally selling their apes because of that and that was maybe one of the first times I've seen a moral compass in quotes uh affect people within an nft collection more than I've ever seen in my life yeah um I'll give you my completely transparent uh my emotional roller coaster when I saw that. Okay. And I'll put it all in perspective because you love sports. I know you love sports. You love Top Shot. And I'm a coach. I'm a high school boys basketball coach. And so um, to back it up a little bit, Kevin Rose has always been somebody that I, I do not enjoy. Um, I'll just say that. Like, not that that's some shocker. But even when Moonbirds at the very beginning, I was always a little bit hesitant because of him, actually. Had nothing to do with anything else, but just him in general. And so um, the day that that was announced, I was coaching our regional um, tournament. So we had to be in the top three, basically, to move on to state. And we did not end up making it to state. And so obviously, if you competitive person, um, I come off the floor. I'm already, like, sad and pissed off, you know, like, just disheartened you know i'm not mad at the kids it's just like the season when you coach sports i love it but at the end you know when when no matter if you win the whole thing or, or you don't it just ends there's not like a it doesn't slow down it doesn't like give you this nice off ramp it just ends and so i'm emotionally charged we talk to our kids you know lo love you guys appreciate the seniors you know everybody else make sure you're ready to come back and work i get on the bus i open my phone and of course the first thing i see is this acquisition and I was like, excuse my language, what the fuck? Like, that was my first thought instantly. Like, this is me just being transparent. As a Yuga Labs maxi, I am that 100%. If you've seen me on the timeline, if you've heard me talk, if you've seen my street, I'm very, like, extremely pro Yuga uh, and Board API Club. And so right away, I was like, what the hell is this? I also didn't understand, obviously, some of the details. And I still don't know all of them. Like, they haven't told us everything that happened. And, you know, yeah, the board meeting I thought was all right. I thought, um, you know, Daniel was very canned answered, like very canned. Like he had these questions, wrote down the answers, and, and that is what it is. Um, and then you saw, by the way, side note, you saw a very quick transition to Gargastack being back. So maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe they realized that this is becoming too corporate and too robotic, if you will. And so instantly was pissed. Didn't think about selling my ape. But it was instantly pissed. What the hell? You know, we, you know, as board ape members, we're so focused on naturally. Like, what about the yacht club? Like, not not the not even the in real life clubhouse. I'm just talking about the membership, like I just talked about, right? Like, what about being a board ape? That's where my focus has always been. So I went from being mad, pissed, disappointed, disheartened, sad, maybe. And then as I started to kind of dig into some of it, what I began to, I think, realize, at least for me, and everybody's opinion can be different. That's what's dope about opinions. We can all have them. Is I looked at the people they were acquiring rather than them like buying this project that, you know, I've always thought was just kind of okay. What Proof Collective has done with their art stuff has always been really, really top notch. When you talk about the visuals, when you talk about the video editing, et cetera, like that has always been something I've really enjoyed. And I've never ever owned any of those assets. And sorry, I started thinking about, well, if you can take these talented people and add them to the mix, if you will, theoretically, that makes things better. And I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I'm lost in the NFT world, but yesterday, 12-fold um, pushed out a video and I thought it was really well done. It was clean, right? And it showed like, these are the physicals that you can now claim. There's 300 of them. And the video was cool. It was well done. Well, guess who did the video? It was one of those people that came over from Proof. And so like, I guess what I would say is I think you look at it as they got a bunch of money at the treasury, which is a positive, And they got, they also brought over hopefully the best parts of proof. And I, I do believe that is true and got rid of Kevin, which was the worst part. So like at the end of the day, am I completely like ecstatic? No, but I'm not mad either. Like I think, I think what it also brings naturally is I would say for the most part, Moonbirds holders are very loyal 
And what that does is it brings more loyal community members, I know that's cliche, to Yuga Labs. And I think that's a, a long-term fat dub. Well, it sounds like they're going to finish off whatever they were working on with proof and then transition. And from the conversations, it sounded like the intention is to build Moonbirds into the other side. And so let's talk about the other side trips. Been interesting because everybody kind of said from day one with with how the mint went that this is going to be the surefire most successful metaverse experience that is going to come faster than anything else. And for anyone that doesn't know, uh, I, I mean, maybe let's just talk about the mint for the other side first. Uh, going back my quick like TLDR was they had a free claims for if you had a mutant or an ape and then you were able to mint the mint ended up basically breaking Ethereum where you had to spend over a thousand dollars in gas just to mint the sales went crazy the floors came out initially at about 70th is there anything else you want to add regarding that initial mint time uh talk about hysteria and excitement that mint might be at the top um the only other detail i'd say is one thing that was was not known right away was as board ape and mutant ape holders we kind of thought oh shit if i want a lower numbered uh land i need to mint faster oh and so that actually because we didn't know we didn't know right away well, maybe we should have but we didn't know um that it was going to be associated with our number of our ape you know, probably should we have known? Oh, actually, it was more location because we weren't sure. It's like, well, what if you mint right away and you get one closer, even if your number's 9,837? And so there was a little, it was a little unclear. And so I remember like, you know, claiming those pretty quickly because I wasn't really sure where they'd end up. Again, yeah, thinking back to that uh, absurdity for sure, pain was needed a long time ago. And now we're finally starting to get that information out here over the next, I don't know, six months or so. But yeah, I would say euphoric. That's the number one uh, word that I'd come up with during that man, because it was insane. And then we've had a couple of experiences. I think we've had three trips. I remember for the first one, it was relatively short, but they had a kind of like a monster fight and they had the character that was voicing and it, it felt really, really clean and then the second one it was kind of like a game where they tried to make where it was a puzzle jumper and then people got a free nft that's you know a lot of people are saying oh my god if other side is successful this is the first nft one from that and again to your point earlier about eh, i don't really care about history like I, you know I, that's something i've been paying attention to we've saw uh recently with the original founder uh crypto kitties people buying those up and just the you know the narratives around everything but for the other side the most recent one was more of an open landscape where some of described it as Pokemon Snap, and I feel like that was a good representation of it, but it did feel very different compared to the first ones. I don't know if that was because they ended up switching from Improbable, but there's kind of a whole lot to unpack there, so dissect it however Fibaka would dissect the uh, yeah. other side experiences so far. Yeah, for sure. Uh, first two experiences... Crazy, crazy and amazing at the same time. The first one, I actually was, I was on my laptop with a hotspot, um, and I was in the passenger side as my wife was driving across Dallas because my my brother in law had just proposed. It was like the worst timing ever for me, and so, <laughs> but it worked well. Like I was still able to play it, which was like that was kind of shocking. First off, the second one, yeah, having the the little groups and teammates and and people that were kind of leading us around, that was fun. The third one, and and the thing I would say is. I would really, if you haven't yet, follow Eric Reed. Um, he's really heading up other side, and he's just like, I think he's a really high quality person, just because of the way I've heard him talk. I've heard him speak a few times now, and so this third one, to me, and if you again, if you dig through the details a little bit, and yeah, fine tooth um, comb, they had to redo a lot of this. Like they had to remake and think about what other side was. Like that's pretty obvious, and cleaning up some aspects and taking away, stripping back some of it was also important to push forward. And I think the reason is, again, this is just me. This is no, this is no, uh, alpha. This is just Phil talking. I think potentially they were, um, hyped up, blown smoke up their backside a little bit on the speed at which this would come out and the things that you'd be able to do faster than maybe was actually going to be possible. 
at maybe the price point or, or timeline or whatever it may be. That does whatever. That's secondary. But I think at the end of the day, what happened was um, with Daniel, Eric, Mike Sievers coming in, they probably, to be honest with you, sat down and said, "Hey, let's look at this more in, from a realistic point of view." This is just my again my takeaway. And they thought to them, and they and they told you know the entire founding team that like here's what we need to do to make this really 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 impactful when we actually get there. And so what does that mean? Well. If you went into the third one, the land itself was dope, though. Like all of like the visuals, the coloring, those type of things, those finer details, if you will, really well done. There wasn't a game to be played, but that's because they didn't want it to actually feel like a trip. They said that multiple times. They said, this is not the third trip. This is more of a let's test out the tech and see what you like and get feedback and then iterate. So one thing I would say that I'm very um, hopeful for is that you're going to see these type of experiences and testing out different features much faster than we ever had before. Because what, again, when I listened to Gargo and I listened to Eric, when they were doing the first and second trip, it was like a show, right? Like it was really like a show, a piece of entertainment, if you will. And everything had to make sure that it was right. And the, the amount of time to go in for that one show, well, let's take that time and actually really flesh out. Let's get the Schiller into his other side plot so he can start building if he wants to faster. Let's get these 3D avatars to people so they can start creating, you know, dope content on the timeline. I think that's where the change happened. And I'm hopeful. Um, MeBits, I believe, at the end of this month is having a an experience. I'm not going to call it a trip. I'm going to just call it an experience. And then after that, like, I wouldn't be shocked if we're back in, you know, other side for for apes and other deed holders. Maybe in, you know, maybe in April or May for sure. And the other note I would say is, We've talked about communication. One thing that's been lacking from most people's perspective is the fact that the communication has, has sucked a lot of the time. Now, let's just keep it a buck. Mo a lot of people, most people actually, liked that when things were great because less communication meant for more speculation, naturally. And so sometimes that would make things run maybe faster or hotter than they probably should have. Well, I think, I know, that you guys seeing this and making a change we at Board Media Group were able to host, um, right after Apes Come Home, we were able to host them on a uh, X space and talk to Eric, Mike Sievers. They were all in there. Uh, I can't think of uh, one of the people that builds a lot of the mapping. I cannot think of his name. He didn't have a lot of followers, but this guy used to work at EA Sports. Like He did massive things. Being able to hear that and just hear their vision a little bit was great. And then Dim, who is the metaverse steward for the ApeCoin DAO and amazing. He also has Sanj, which is the amazing... Um, clothing brand that he has. He also host him on, hosted Eric on Monday for his Metaverse Monday talk. So man, the amount of information and communication that they've had over the last month is better than they did over the last two years. And so this board meeting that's going to be happening on the, uh, like a week or so, or this weekend, Monday, it's Monday. Um, those things are going to happen for other side as well. They've said that as much as that they want to do these town hall type things in the other side discord as well to have conversations, to have open forum, and then to get feedback and iterate on what we like and what we don't. I think building in public is actually going to mean something now where before they kind of said that and it never meant anything. And so did I think that were my expectations maybe too high at the beginning looking back? Yeah. I mean, I had these like crazy thoughts that I'd be building an 18 hole, you know, metaverse golf course, like six months after the fact and like hosting people on pimp my ride or or uh what's the damn where you go into their house my crib mtv cribs type style you know content and the reality is that was never going to happen that fast now have they are they maybe Hell a year yeah, behind bro. where they would have been yeah maybe maybe i don't know that for a fact but maybe but i guess what i would say is uh let your thoughts know um connect with these people eric mike etc and dm them and don't be an asshole when you do that like just have a conversation like i truly believe that if you just have conversations with these people, it doesn't mean that they're going to fix everything instantly and, and do exactly what you want. But I promise you, that is the better way to go about it than just being an asshole on the, on the DMs. I think one of the interesting components of this is giving everybody perspective. And Hunar, thank you so much for the 37 months, Ali Abru. The, uh, the timeline we've set for the entire blockchain space, I think 
as you go on X every single day, people are saying, ah, uh, you know, is this collection going to be like Yuga? Well, hold on, we're going this angle. Didn't Yuga do that? And almost everything is always just placed on Yuga. And now we have a chance to see, okay, Yuga has taken this long to create this experience. And it feels like just new NFT mints that are saying, hey, we're doing a bigger game has have almost died. And I know that's that's not accurate, right? There's Persona. There is several other gaming uh, NFTs that have launched recently uh, that are out there. But it just feels the way that it was. If, if a team isn't coming in with some massive backers that's able to say, hey, I've already raised all this and that kind of ground roots mint, it feels like those don't really exist as much. And do you think that's in any way seen how long Yuga took or just the space maturing a little bit more? I think it's just the space maturing more in general. Like if you think about it, man, and it's again, I talk about this like it was 20 years ago. It wasn't I mean, it was a couple of years ago. It feels like 20, maybe 76 years or so. Uh, man, every roadmap was like, we're going to build a metaverse, every freaking roadmap. And now like looking back, that was probably really foolish. And so us as a space, are we maturing? Yeah, I think 100%. We're not instantly aping into everything. So it's more now about, Hey, show us, don't just talk about it. Show us. And I think that's good long-term. And again, like you guys taking it on the chin and rightfully so. And they're making adjustments like any new company should be doing. So I think it's the space maturing. I Which, hope so. At least. <laughs> well, I mean, with the hope space so. maturing, I mean, we're, we're seeing the meme coin mania absolutely yeah. soar in here. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. But obviously, it's cool to see that the attention is back. And so, I mean, I, I guess in like a, a broader scope, how do you go about trying to explain this to people? Because my... I guess like my perspective's changing. And so I'm trying to word it more lately about how NFTs should be looked at more like game assets, unless it is something that is specifically for the art and, you know, just like whatever game where there's certain game assets that are worth more than others and seeing how that kind of flushes out. Obviously we have people complaining about paywalls and mobile gaming that are doing this kind of stuff. And I mean, I guess there's too many ways to go look at it, right? Like my, my brain's frying right now trying to think of how many different directions you can take with it. But like, what do you, think the best form of explaining what nfts are in their current form is that's like the million dollar question actually because and i know this for a fact um and i know you answer this question all the time with your streams and on the time on etc i also work with young adults and so i can promise you they've asked me this probably one million times and a lot of the times even though i feel very much um present, very present, over present in the space. Like I spend probably too much time here because I love it. Right. But explaining what an NFT is, that's tricky because yeah, it's almost, it's almost like the definition changes with whatever meta we're in. And that's not great either. Um, cause NFTs can be so much theoretically, um, or they can be not even theoretically. We've seen it. We've seen it as a collectible and top shot sports memories, et cetera, experiences. We've seen it as just straight art. Like NFTs can just be art too, because you like the art. Um, gaming assets, that's become, I would say, the most uh, impactful meta now. Like I look at all of the gaming parallel, um, Nifty Island, all these people that are doing these like really cool iterations on what gaming is. I think it's interesting. So what do I say what an NFT is? I would say that it's a non-fungible token. <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a token that can prove that you own an asset and that asset could be classified in many different ways. And that's really hard because like even me saying that right now, that's pretty like simple, but not, right? Like that's, they'll look at you like, okay, and what are those things? And so I think it's more about being able to show them how you can interact on the blockchain, how these things work, how you can be verified, et cetera, with gaming assets, showing them how you can actually take this character that you own and, and put it into the other side. Like being able to run around as my pink for ape, that was really cool. Like that was dope. And you could see that and like, please let me take this to any other game. Like those are the things that make more sense rather than talking about it. Because at the end of the day, I think a lot of our perception changes with the meta, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a token shows ownership. Um, and maybe gives you benefits. 
Well, I like the way that you say showing ownership, and that's like a default answer for some people that have been in yeah. the space. But, you know, it immediately goes to then the gaming side of things and saying, hey, like this is for a gaming experience. But at some point, I think we're going to see where it's beyond that. Right. And I don't just mean art. and I don't just mean like a game experience. But we've been told <laughs> as this space has been growing that, you know, blockchain is going to be implemented in everyday life from, you know, reward systems to uh, uh, the art, the gaming assets, and, you know, people are saying the healthcare records are going to start being on the blockchain, and it's a whole new realm, and we'll see how long that actually takes, but what's intrigued you lately? Obviously, you're really heavy into Yuga, but is it something for you where you're just kind of waiting to see what comes up? Are you getting heavy into DeFi? What's Phil been up to? Yeah, interesting. Uh, I would say majority of my focus and energy right now, for the most part, has still been on board ape and even maybe more so than ever, which sounds crazy because even through the bear, I was more focused on that than anything else. And a lot of that was with board media group, like having, you know, great conversations every Wednesday night, uh, on Twitch, YouTube X, et cetera. That's been a lot of fun being able to talk to builders and creatives, like doing articles, doing spotlights on, you know, board building is kind of what we call it or board spotlight, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, that's been my focus, but I would say learning about DeFi has been interesting. I've done, some things, nothing major. Shout out to Squirtle, probably, you know, one of my, definitely not probably, one of my best friends in the space. Um, you know, he he's so smart with that and, and he's willing to answer questions that I may have, which has been great. Um, I would say a collection that I'm interested in that I don't own um, because of what they have upcoming is actually Azuki because I'm interested to see what the anime does. I really am. Uh, I'm not, I'm not an anime fan actually, but what I would say is that I'm interested to see what these builders are doing. And so what does that mean? I'm not really sure. I watched their video on the creation of, um, the elementals mint, which we talked about. That was like, let's be honest, keep it a buck again. That was a shit show in itself. I'm talk about the art, listening to the team. I think that's always bullish for me. I wish more teams would do that, actually, is peel back the curtain a little bit. Doesn't mean you're telling us everything you're doing, but let us know who you are. I think when we actually get to tie in that these people are actually still human, I think that's a major thing because then we can get to know a little bit more about them, their personality, et cetera, and where that fits in to this project that you're holding. And so I would say for the most part, I'm still very interested in in um, NFTs primarily, um, Board Apes specifically, um, I've talked a little bit to Scion, Scion as well, which does some, basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm able to stake an ape that I don't have a mutant ape that I don't have the 2000 ape coin to do. And, and I can get that return for free. I think I get like 40% of that or something. So that's been interesting to me. I know I knew the team. I talked to the team a bit. So I'd say my ears and eyes are open, but I've been kind of chill when it comes to diving in. I haven't been meme coining. I haven't been doing a lot of those things, but I've been listening to the timeline. I've been trying to be a sounding board, and I would say my focus has been on feeling how Board Ape and Yuga, you know, holders are, and trying to do my best to give that to, you know, members of the team that I know, and then also just like I'm running for the BIYC council, and that'll, you know, co lead position. That's something that I'm really passionate about because I, I mean, I've just been doing this forever. I've been showing up and, and you know, trying to make connections and help people and entertain and inform in a positive manner, and that's taken a lot of my like focus right now does that mean that's you know forever and forever and forever no will board ape always be at the top of my list yeah i think it will be but i'm really interested also in in decentralized education and i've got some things cooking um here over the next month or so that i'll be excited to share about too Awesome. Awesome. So for your, I mean, it, it's interesting that you guys doing so many different things that gives the community an opportunity to participate a little bit more beyond. And I think that that's yeah. cool that they're, you know, one of the people leading that aspect. But as we're moving forward here, I know we only got you for about another 10, 15 minutes. I am wanting to go back to the top shot days. If you are down with that, because that yeah, was, sure. <laughs> that was something that was a viral moment. I mean, we had broadcasters saying top shot that we had, had the TNT panel, Pat McAfee, everybody on their different shows talking about it. You spoke briefly about Board Apes and people saying, oh, you know, celebrities bought. They started highlighting that. And that was the exact same thing that happened with Top Shot. What do you remember about the early days and how did you kind of realize like, hey, this is the next big thing? Did you show up a little bit late to that peak or you're a little bit early? Yeah, man. Top Shot is one of my favorite memories, even though, even though, you know, uh, I did not make as much money as I could have because if it wasn't for Top Shot, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. 
uh, at the end of the day, it brought me, it brought me into NFTs. It brought me into same, the space same. and crypto more in general. And so I remember opening my first pack would have been the first week of January, 2021. I was coaching basketball and I had seen it maybe, maybe an Instagram ad or something. I know they took them down, but at some point I swear I saw it on Instagram, maybe in November. And I was like, ah, what the hell? Like these are videos. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But then I saw it again, probably on the timeline more than likely. And, um, got done with the game, went into my truck and bought like four packs, right. And opened them. And the rest is history because to me, of course it was the collecting. Like, again, like I said, I am, I'm a collector. I have so many like sports cards, memorabilia in this house. It's not even funny. And so that part was always fun, but it was also just like the digital opening and, and the music and, and seeing the play over and like, I'm, I'm a basketball junkie. And so seeing great plays was like, it made sense to me. And then again, like I said this at the beginning, but it's completely true. Watching streams like yours made it, um, a hundred times more electric because the thing is you were super informed. You were obviously attuned. You were in every, you know, chat, you knew the pulse of the community, you knew what was coming up. And I, and I was there too, you know, it was like, the amount of time, man, when I look back of just like talking on different discords, not even the official Top Shot discord, but um, I was in a discord called the Deposit Kingdom with Pete Overzet and Peter Jennings, all these people that were like big into Top Shot early. And man, the amount of conversations that went on there about, I think about the metallic golds, man, I made a really aggressive play on that was probably shit. I don't know, April or May of 2021. I'd have to go back and look. And I was like, these things are going to be, oh man, you got to get this because then you can get this. I, I think it was Joel Embiid or somebody, you know, and, and there won't be that many of them. And so the amount of money just throwing it around, um, yeah, were we chasing the dragon a little bit? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I have very fond memories and I give a shout out to Top Shot because let's just, again, keep it real. They made the process of being able to get into NFTs and, 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 and crypto actually seamless you didn't have to think about it you didn't have to know about it unless you wanted to and i think that was they cracked the code really early where some of the teams now are still trying to work on that is like how do we get people into this ecosystem without thinking oh this is an nft and so like again your stream the deposit kingdom discord i, I mean it was um what was it top top shot there was a top shot pete overs that hosted one i don't remember what it's called club top shot Oh, such a crazy name club top shot. I remember watching those like religiously as well, just because it was just so insane. Like the pricing was crazy. You know, you'd wake up in those early days. I remember cause randomly they'd like do a stress test where they would drop a pack and you'd be like, I'd be sitting in my bed and I'm, I'm just refreshing because somebody, you know, said, Oh, there's one coming in 30 minutes. And then you just like going balls to the wall just to hope that you could get, you know, two or three packs. And I remember hitting some of those and just euphoric because again, it was about collecting. Um, I wasn't selling tons and tons. I had some, you know, good sales, but I was just trying to collect because again, for me, um, man, it sounds corny as hell, but I like met so many people through that too. Like that's what got me started with what is community. Well, the, my first community was really through top shot. So very fond memories. I still hold a bunch of top shot. Have I bought any recent? No, I have not. But, um, still good memories for me. I feel like we haven't really had like a major onboarder the same way the Top Shot has been. And I mean, whether for like the entirety of the Web3 community to get behind uh, and then just from like an adoption standpoint for anybody, you know, trying out the blockchain for the first time. But going back to those original days, I want to try to pick my own brain and yours with this because I remember some of the reasons why the market went nuts was obviously that there wasn't many moments. I remember yeah. scrolling through the timeline or the marketplace and nothing was selling. <laughs> it was like a sale every couple hours, even if that. And then the withdrawals were also non-existent. They didn't have that. You had yep. to wait through like a process. And then people started getting banned too, because if you bought a pack, you essentially made money. And that was what Top Shot was known for. But then obviously they changed it where, you know, they went from limited edition, limited limiting the additions of some of the collections uh, from open to limited. And then they ended up printing a whole lot more and it kind of spell, fell down this spiral. But for those stress tests too, that was another thing that if you were not just sitting at your computer waiting, you were missing out big bucks sometimes. Yeah. Dude, completely insane. You know, I just thought of another one that's equally or maybe more insane. I don't know if I've ever told you this. Man, this is like maybe March, February, 2021, Dingaling did a giveaway 
Oh, to like a legendary moment. And I fucking won that thing. Oh my so God. Dingling still, still follows me to this day. Like I DM'd with him during whenever I, I guess I could look back and see when I won that. Um, which was crazy because you didn't even know if this person was real. Right. It was like, it was just this like mysterious person that was spending so much on, on top shot. And obviously since then, so many other things here. Um, uh, okay. It was in May, actually May, 2021, early May. So right after I freaking banked a board ape, I won this freaking all. And at the time, you know, it was probably worth like, I don't know, 6,000, 8,000, $10,000. And now I don't, I have no clue what it's worth now. I kept it. Cause I was like, I can't sell this. I got it from dingling. It's so dope. But yeah, man, it's like, they fumbled the bag for sure. A lot of this is exactly what you said. You couldn't get enough cards. You could not get enough packs for your desire. And so what ended up happening is then you're going to the secondary market. You're spec and we were speculating a lot too, right? It was like, dude, this Killian Hayes fucking debut moment is going to be worth like at least $5,000. It's probably worth like $5 now, you know, but at the time, um, man, those things were running. And I remember doing that. And, oh my God, Brandon Ingram. And I love Brandon Ingram as a player. I think I bought one of his like, you know, first moments for probably like 500 bucks. And if I looked at that now, it's probably worth like $6. So, um, a lot of it was scarcity, extreme scarcity. A lot of it was again, like the Q system that was, that would tilt you off your head too, because it's like, shit, I missed out again on this damn pack. And the Q system just seemed to screw me once they started to incorporate that. So then I'd end up trying to find things on the secondary. And again, like the metallic gold, like I played that game. And, and, you know, now you look at it and it's probably more right now than it ever was. Like if we're just being honest, but so many people got absolutely crushed and burned from buying shit. Like I remember selling a Zion. It was like a baseline dunk, well, not even in his first moment, cool dunk. And I sold that thing for like, maybe like 900 bucks. That's stupid. Like, let's just be real. That's stupid. That's like a, should be an under $10. But at the time, everything was going for that. Um, and so I think a lot of people got burned. And so naturally, are they going to ever go back to something like that? No. Do I think Top Shot maybe fumbled so hard that they never, you know, capture that moment again? Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe. Maybe they were too early. Maybe they got too hot too fast and they fizzled out. But again, to me, very good memories. I mean, I haven't bought. I just went back and looked. I purchased a pack the last time two years ago. Did you get other like, ones? Because I, I, I realized when I checked out my account that they gave us like a bunch of free packs. I don't know when. I have no clue. Like I haven't <laughs> been in here. I haven't been in here in forever, honestly. So it's like I look and, and it's like I don't. I, I think I, I, ca I maybe sold a bunch of moments off for cheap there for a minute. But I mean, I don't know, man. It's It's wild to look at this and just kind of you think about shoot where did top shot start and where it is here we go it's a malik beasley hollow is what i won from dingling which again at the time was was probably like substantially expensive and now you know it's uh okay yes dingling bought the uh, was it this one which one is this uh no 37 he bought a bunch of these ones but he spent um Seven thousand dollars on the one that was serial number seven. Yikes. Anywho, they're selling. They're selling now for a hundred and thirty-five dollars. So it's again like it's all absurdity. And I loved the experience of Top Shot. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I haven't bought anything in two years. Am I going to go back there ever? I don't know. I don't know. Like so rare, I think has been maybe doing better. I haven't really dipped my toe in there either. Just because, like, let's just be honest. In this crypto and Web three space, there's so many things going on, and there's only so much time. And it's like, I, I transitioned from top shot to more of these stupid monkey JPEGs. You know, like that's, that's what I've been focused on. I still think that it's cool though. Cause I mean, how many people were here for the beginning and, and oh, it's yeah. weird cause we say 100%. that we're, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess I would classify myself as like an OG, but the actual OG people are, are the ones that were in, you know, for crypto punks and all those yeah. really early things. But you know, one of the, one of the notions that I had and tried to present for a while was, you know, PFPs for a point on X Twitter was what we came into the space for, right? Like if you were rocking a crypto punk at the time when all that stuff was going crazy, that generally meant you were here before other people or you had money to be able to go buy that when board apes or if you saw somebody with a board ape, you're like, okay, that person probably minted it or bought it early. And then we kind of went down the list. Same with Top Shot, people that were super fans of that, uh, Gutter Cat Gang, when, they, you know, that came out, Doodles, yeah. when that came out as well, that's, you know, obviously some people switched up from the one before, but it felt like collections were the representation of when you joined the blockchain space. 
one hundred percent. That's that's exactly what's cool about the blockchain space because it really does like it puts a stamp on on when you got here, and uh, that's pretty freaking dope. I wanted to see really quick how much I paid for this Brandon Ingram. Fuck, I don't even want to tell you, Rick. <laughs> Man, I paid way too much. I hadn't looked at this. I paid, oh my God, $780 for this Brandon Ingram moment that now sells for like $6. Ah, it's anyway. crazy. Yeah, it's a kick right in the scrotum. But nonetheless, it is crazy. It is a stamp. It is like a feather in your cap as well. You know, to, and it doesn't mean that you're better than anyone, but it lets everyone know like this is this was my um, Genesis moment. And for me, it was Top Shot 100%. It's my Genesis moment, which um, I... Even even after looking at that, I should have never looked this up. But even after looking at this, I'm still like ecstatic that I even got into Top Shot. Because again, if not for Top Shot, when would I got into NFTs? I don't really know. Like I really don't know. And so everything else, everything happens for a reason. I love Top Shot. I still have love for Top Shot for sure. And uh, and a lot of that was again from your show and everything that you did. Well, thanks, Phil. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you taking the time here. So I got your Twitter up on here. If you guys are wanting to follow, it's at Fibaka31. But you do board media group. You're running for one of the BAYC council members. Give us kind of a quick little shill, if you will, yeah. all, all about you. Yeah, very quick shill. So yeah, I started board media group uh, about two years ago with uh, Raving Ape and Bright, who are both actual brothers in real life. I met them actually standing in line at the first Ape Fest and then also running into them at the second Ape Fest in line, which felt like some sort of like destiny, if you will. And so we started Board Media Group right after Second Ape Fest. We have a stream every single Wednesday night at 9 p.m. EST. We talk all things Yuga Labs, have a lot of interviews with people. We've had Danny Green on, who used to work for MeBits. We've had Jeff Nicholas on. We've had a bunch of people from the team. Um, also, I am running, and the voting ends actually in like uh, like seven hours or so. And so if you hold a Board Ape or a Mutant Ape, you don't have to have any Ape coin. There's some confusion there. If you have a Board Ape or a Mutant Ape, I would love your support. I'm running. I'm one of uh, five nominees for uh, co-lead of the BAYC Council, with, which basically means I would be working with a group of five total, including that position, to help the community. And I'd be working in tandem with Josh Ong, who I've known Josh for freaking ever. Um, that's somebody that I would say is a homie for sure. And um, what do I bring? I bring communication, uh, culture, and community like that's my focus i've always done that i've been a sounding board my dms are always open i've tried to work really hard at being positive in the space and honestly just like show my love for the for the board apes forever and i feel like i've kind of been doing this job without the title for a long time and i would just love any support that anybody has amazing let's uh let's do this more often i'm gonna i'm gonna try to be doing these uh yeah. social streams on fridays but we'd love to have you as a, a recurring guest and again big shout out to you for that original tag back in the day absolute gem <laughs> big love to you my friend